beginning. That's exciting. Where are you? Uh, we're in Harold. Uh, because they were going. I'm planning to do it right here. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not. Oh, I'm glad I'm not. Right out the kitchen window. Oh, really? It's not necessary. Is it nesting or is it just I'm sitting on a nest. Yeah. The nest is kind of high, so I can see the silhouette of it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're here for public comment, you need to sign up. If you're here for one of the three public uh, sessions that we're having, uh, you need to sign up a, a, as well. We'll get started here in about uh, two minutes. So if you're, like I said, if you're here just for public comment, but if you're here for one of the uh, public hearings, please be sure to sign up on the uh, lectern. How are you? Good, how are you? Fire to middle. Anybody shopping done your way? Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah, I think people are now more than the stuff. So important. Yeah, it, it's maybe it's very so that big thing, money you got, you just need to This looks like a long meeting. Just money. Money by the mail. Take that to the bank. Oh, you do that. What's the view off your back deck? Comes out of the bad man. <laughs> I have 30 seconds. I got six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> The Miller Warren Street rampage back there. Then everything is back to normal. I mean, the code. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll call the June the first meeting of the Franklin Town Council to order. Uh, the first uh, item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Vice Mayor Barbara McRae. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, the first thing I need to ask is, is there anyone that wants to... Uh, make any changes to the uh, agenda as presented tonight any changes if not uh, we'll entertain a motion uh, to adopt the uh, town agenda as presented so move. No. all right Sorry. okay i have a motion and a second all in favor okay the next one is the approval of the consent agenda for june the first uh, I'll ask for a, a motion to approve the consent, consent agenda unless somebody has a question. So we make a motion. Mike makes a motion. Second. Second. All right. All in favor. Okay. Public hearings. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, the first, first uh, public hearing that we have is the uh, for special use application for the Scenic Ridge Development. Uh, is anyone signed up to uh, speak at this point? Yes. Mr. Castro, Robert Castro. Yes, sir. You want to speak from back there or would you like to come up to the lectern, sir? I prefer to come up there. You Sorry. come right ahead, sir. Welcome. Thank you very much. If you'd uh, state your name and address, sir, for the record. Sure, I'm Dr. Roberto Castro. And uh, we live over here in, uh, just on the border of Franklin, on uh, Pine Hill Park. We just moved here. I've only been a resident uh, two years, both my wife and I. Uh, just as a way of background, uh, I'm a former vice president for a computer corporation called Data General Corporation, handled all of Eastern Europe and Central Asia. 
and South America, and then I became the regional director of the United States Treasury for Eastern Europe. So I've had a wonderful life, and America has given me that. I'm a graduate of Loyola University, and then my master's out of Yale. Um, Franklin fits in with a little town where I grew up, and it's a wonderful place. And I can't even begin to tell you how wonderful Franklin really is in relationship to what I've seen around the world and in my own personal experience. What I wanted to ask really was, in the comprehensive land use plan, I noticed you know, that there's going to be some uh, adjustments to the land use of where we sit, actually, everyone along the edge of, of the new development where the homes are tentatively scheduled to be built as opposed to the, the condos or that particular component. Um, it's a sloping property. So the fundamental question I have at this juncture, and if it's inappropriate, please let me know and use it another time, was that uh, is a basement going to be included in part of the uh, height limitations on the single family homes? Or is that not, you know, like you could have a basement and then two stories as a limitation, which you know, the net effect is that if the basement's above grade, then it really effectively becomes three levels. And, you know, from a purely personal standpoint, <laughs> we have a wonderful view of the mountains where we are because we're on the very corner. And uh, so I just need to understand if I'm going to have to tilt my head at an angle or whatever it is that I need to do to uh, to, to continue to get that, that route. And I just need some clarification as the planning goes whether a basement is part of the development process. And I recognize that the lands are now just being kind of subdivided and they're, they're what I've seen of the appropriate plan so far is that there'll be some acreage directly in front of us. Uh, there's actually three lots, potentially. They're set back. The land is sloping probably in the neighborhood around 35 to 45 degrees. And so the question then becomes how far over and then the walkway comes around and whether there's really that concept of a basement going to be allowed. That's really the fundamental thing. And I, and I, I'm, I may be ahead of the curve rather than trying to... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Castro, I think you're ahead of me uh, <laughs> because I'm not sure I can answer that question. Is okay. it, uh, Mr. Stetzer, can you answer his, his question on that, sir? I'm, I'm completely lost, <laughs> sir. So, so with this, this development, um, the height restrictions, which I think is 65 feet when it comes to residential, um, it starts at ground level. So if, a, if it was a basement it was underground, then it would that wouldn't go against a half height requirement. Um, and with this um, subdivision, uh, we're just discussing the lots is all we're doing tonight. Because each house is going is a build a use lot. So it could you could see a house with a basement and three stories potentially. You could? Yes. And, and, but it has to be at a sixty five foot height? Yeah, I believe it's 65 foot in our ordinance. Is that to the roof line? Above the roof line? And if the if the land is at... That probably be to the peak of the roof. Because it's hot, cold hot. But the question he's having is, from if it's peak of the roof, where do you start at? You would start at ground level. Yeah, the ground, ground level the is. top or the bottom. So you could potentially have a basement sometimes where you got one part of the basement at ground level, but other it's sloped here, so you start at whatever's the lowest slope. Lowest slope. Yeah. Okay. You know, you have a back side of the basement that's exposed. Daylight, yeah. So at this juncture, and I presume it's fairly early in the process, you're just trying to, to assess what the break, the makeup, the, the, the zoning is for the various properties? Yeah, well, we'll know what the zoning is. The idea is if they want to approve the development, <coughs> the amount of lots, and the roads and the sidewalks and everything like that. And then the next step would actually be the, the building process. And that's a different process. And that, that, that could be each lot individually because they're not going to be building houses and selling, they're just going to be selling lots. Okay. So each person could build their house <coughs> on the lot. 
And when that when that process began, will there be public input? Not at that point, unless they started somebody decided to split it up or something. Um, that would be just for each lot themselves, because it'd be just like if, you know anybody buys a house and they build a house, they just go through the build permit phase. It wouldn't be public input for that. So at this juncture, what's the next process from this meeting? Um, if it if the town council decides to approve it tonight, then the developer can start their grading process and development of the property. <laughs> that was my selfish concern. <laughs> All right, sir. Uh, yeah. I apologize. No, no. Do you, did, uh, did did that answer your question, though? Well, it leads towards it. You know, I, I used to be on the city council in another community in California, and, and, and that was handled differently. Mm -hmm. I happen to like this process better, and I understand that as a, I've only been here two years. <laughs> Give me 10 years, we might have a different discussion. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, well, but nevertheless. Well, feel uh, free to call at any time. Let's see if we can, you know, if you have a concern. I will. I mean, uh, I mean, I've just begun to really get a grasp, and I, I'm like a lot of folks. You know, I'm I'm really interested in, in uh, cooperating in a process and becoming involved in that process. But it takes time, and I understand what a small town is because where I originally grew up was a very small town that grew into, a, unfortunately, a very large town. Mm -hmm. So I understand that. Thank you very much for the time. Yes, Mr. Craig. Just for clarification, you said 65 feet height, right, Justin? Mm -hmm. Is that from the lowest point? Like if it's on a slope, then part of the house could be... Yeah, it'd be from wherever the lowest point would It would be, be, okay. Lowest to the highest. But there's no, I mean, somebody could build a one-story house. There's, it's kind of as built, everybody, you know. Right, but I mean, to his point, I mean, I think if, if it's from the lowest point, then that should tell you that... It couldn't be more than 65. Yeah, and a part of that, the, the dilemma is part of the, the land process. In, right. Which, just kind of as a side question, uh, the property in front of us has a lot of shrub and trees that even in the few short years that we've lived here, I've seen it kind of escalate in height. Yeah. What happens to those things? Uh, uh, there'll be a, that's a dilemma, really. I mean, some shrubs they may, might stay, uh, some, if it's where, you know, might, they might go. The good thing about where you live, on that back side of the property, there's that 75 foot east right, bank yeah. so you've got a 75 foot buck. I could step it off. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, some things could go, some could stay, and some, you know, it all depends on how they lay so up the lot. Uh, the reason I brought that up is there were a lot of rumors about how the, the, the trees that have really grown, and they have really grown in just a few short years that we've been here, have gotten quite high. That, that was going to be taken out because the roadway <coughs> process yeah. so around, around I'm the walkway of some sorts of... You know, I'm assuming they'll around. be taking some trees out, I mean, to, to build the... Uh, to build the lots, to have a lot the buildable lots and the roads and the sidewalks and throughout there. So I'm assuming some are going to go. Uh, but they probably might add some back for street trees. In this process uh, of this hearing, and then it proceeds on to the zoning, is that what, what this process? I think it's already been to the zoning, sir. Yeah, I, I think zone. it's our unified mm -hmm. development ordinance right. would have the controls on what can actually be built on the lot. I see. Yeah. So Thank I mean, you. that's all written though. Should be should be pretty easy to, to find. Yeah. And, I mean Justin Justin would have to find it, but he can answer your question. Yeah, so like after this, if it's approved or not, since they've approved the whole plan, then somebody comes in a year from now buys a lot from the developer, decides to build a 1,800 square foot house, then then that's what I look to make sure they're meeting their setbacks, where the driveway is going to be, um, and we go through the whole process of our ordinance. It's meeting our ordinance that's laid out. Well, sir, <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you for listening to me. That's thank what you. we're here for, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Nice to see you. Uh, Justin, you want to go ahead on the any uh, anything? Okay. 
Anything else on the yeah, uh, Sacred Ridge development? I don't go over the application, then I'm going to let Mr. Enlow speak more detail about the, uh, the plan. So, um, this application was applied for back in December of 19. Um, it was by Scenic Ridge Properties LLC. Uh, the special use permit is to develop 55.31 acres, which are currently vacant uh, agricultural land, to uh, up to 55 plus lots and 32 townhomes. Uh, the lot, this was actually, this is something that we adopted three years ago, and then we didn't, it didn't get a, it got approved, and then developer got doing some other stuff and it elapsed so they're having to do it again um, it's currently zoned c2 special use the lots are and and uh, prd which is a residential development district um, it has been through a neighborhood compatibility compatibility meeting that um, we had approximately, I think it was about 20 or so attendees, which was people um, like the gentleman just speaking and a couple more I see just came in that came to that meeting to voice concerns and have questions with the developer. Um, in your packet, you will also see, you'll see the application. There's a total of eight lots where you can see the 55 plus lots the site plan for the development which is off of Highlands Road, Tennessee View Street and Thomas Heights Road where you can see the development um, and of course our zoning map and an aerial and our, the staff report which goes in more detail of the, the plan. Um, plan board reviewed this and April and <coughs> recommended approval for it and then of course we set the hearing last month and I'm having the hearing today um, and then you will also find the finding of facts that the town or the planning board approved on at the end of your packet with the questions answered in red uh, any other questions for me or I'll turn it over to Neil he can get more detail on the actual plan anybody on the board Okay. Thank you. I'll be happy to. Kind of hard to talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know who you are now, sir. Yeah, that's right. As I tell people all the time at church, they uh, don't know me with a cap, and at work, they don't know me without one. So okay. now a mask is involved. But uh, the plan has been before you uh, uh, multiple times before, but basically the neat thing I think about it is that, that we plan to put in high fiber in the neighborhood, high speed fiber in the neighborhood. Um, it has wide streets, it has sidewalk on at least one side, it's going to be a walkable neighborhood, and uh, I think it's going to be a neat, a neat thing back this close to town that you don't um, uh, there's nothing else like it I don't think here so um, it's just kind of special I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have about it we've gone through the this is the second time through all the approval processes and um, the uh, we're down to just a few the DOT asked for a few things on permitting and uh, the uh, uh, Dean of the Water had a few clarification questions and other than that sewers approved uh, the uh, Corps of Engineers has approved their part of it so we've got we're ready to proceed you know in, in line with the rest of these pro uh, okay. the process tonight so. any, any further questions from I'm just curious. Any, yes. any uh, restrictions on what size houses, uh, what size buildings could be put in there? I, I put, uh, if you look at the little squares on the map, I, I, so I wouldn't mess up, I marked around each property line you'll see the setbacks 
Every lot has a setback mark, and that is a 1,500 square foot minimum footprint. And we did that because here in town, if you make it too large, then people can't afford it. And so we're thinking that a, a nice uh, 1,500 square foot house with a garage or whatever, how they, we haven't got to the detail of the HOA yet, but that's the thought process. No smaller than. Have you been getting many inquiries from the public about the? I've, I've had a few that keep asking and then you know, because we laid off of it for uh, mm -hmm. uh, three years, they kind of lost interest. <laughs> but, you know, once they see things start to go, it's, it's probably a 12-month process. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be kind of a lot going on for a while. So. Anybody else from the board? Anyone else to speak to this public hearing? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh. I'll declare the uh, public hearing closed uh, since there's no other. Uh, Chief Breedlove, would you uh, attend to the thermostat back there? It's getting awful warm and warm in here, if you would. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, I got we open these doors right here. That right suits here. me fine, yeah. You want to do that? Go right ahead, sir. Uh, the next is the public hearing for the uh, Town of Franklin's uh, budget. Uh, I have nobody signed up to speak for that. Is anyone that wants to speak to the uh, to the budget? If not, uh, Madam Manager, you want to speak to the budget for us, please, ma'am? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor and Council. What you have before you is the proposed budget the Town Council reviewed at your May work session. Um, nothing's been changed um, based on Council's recommendations, so basically that's just a clean copy of what you were proposed earlier in May. Is anyone going to speak to the budget? Ms. McCray, were you? No. Oh, I thought you were getting ready to ask the no. question. All right, I'm hearing uh, no one. Uh, so if that's the case, uh, I'll declare the public hearing closed on the budget. The next item is the uh, public hearing for the Town of Franklin uh, Comprehensive Plan. Uh, no one has signed up to speak to that. Uh, Mr. Setzer, you're back up, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor Town Council. Uh, here in a minute, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Jake Petrosky from Stewart Consulting. He's our lead consultant on this project, which we've been working on for about a year and a half. It was supposed to be in a little, a little sooner, but with the virus, we've got to stretch it out a little longer. Um, but um, as you know, from town councils, this is a uh, plan that we've needed for a long time, and then soon, by law, we're going to have to have. So the timing was actually really good that we started working on it now. Um, I'm assuming a lot of these consulting firms are going to get busier soon. Um, there's multiple towns without these adopted, but um, guys, well, I'll turn it over to Jake, and he'll talk a little bit more. We've got a presentation, and we've got a map here of the the draft um, uh, future land use map. Good evening everyone. Thanks for having me. So I'm going to spend um, probably about uh, 15 minutes or so talking about process and giving you a, just an overview of some highlights of the plan um, what we've heard some of the recommendations in it and then some of the next steps uh, and you know, feel free if you have a question uh, bring it up or we can talk about it in the presentation so what is the land use plan fundamentally it's, it's a tool for guiding growth redevelopment and overall improvement of the town uh, the previous plan in Franklin was adopted in 2007 has served you well. Uh, a lot has happened in the last 13 years though. Um, the issues that the town has encountered, some are the same, some are new, uh, and, and some you've accomplished uh, some things that were in that original plan. So it was time to really to have a community conversation and that's what this, this plan is. It documents that community conversation. Uh, it talks about the vision for the town uh, and actions 
uh, from the private side and then also from the public side and, and also uh, some of the intentions. So it provides general lane use guidance where different things can go, different lane use types, the intensity of those lane use types, also uh, gives some direction on design of, of the different developments that may come before this body uh, and the planning board in the future. Uh, it also provides a guide for infrastructure investments from the public side of things uh, and also guides investment uh, of the private side as well. The process that, that we used, it was a two-part process. Uh, the first part really was, was involving stakeholders uh, and doing some analysis on what are the big issues we had a, a charrette, which is really a, a multi-day public uh, meeting. Um, I gave a lot of opportunity for input. Uh, we developed some vision goals and then recommendations to achieve those vision goals. The draft plan has been available for a few months uh, for review and, and comment. Uh, and then, you know, so, so what we're here to do today is really uh, adopt the plan and then after this, it's, it's implement. Public engagement was key during this process. We had stakeholder interviews, we had steering committee uh, meetings, and uh, the steering committee members uh, attended a lot of the public meetings as well. Uh, they, they gave a lot of their time. Uh, some of the steering committee meetings went um, well into the evening, uh, had a lot of good discussion uh, during those, and, um, and I think that we put together a good plan with their help. So I do really appreciate uh, their, their time and effort. Uh, we had eight public meetings. Uh, a lot of the events were in July. We also had a, a public meeting in March. We had a survey that, that happened during the process that had over 400 responses, uh, which was, was really good as well. We had some traditional meetings where we, we met uh, in um, Tartan Hall. Uh, then we also had some non-traditional meetings where we had a walking tour. Uh, and, and Justin and, and others kind of met and walked around uh, downtown. And, we had a van tour and we went to go see different parts of town and talk about different issues, challenges, and, and some opportunities um, in, in some of the other areas of town. Uh, we also um, had a, a, a breakfast and coffee meeting at the, the Ratskiller, uh, so if people couldn't make an evening meeting, and there was another opportunity for, for folks to get involved. Uh, we also were at the, um, the Heritage Festival as well, uh, and this is just kind of a, a look at the schedule of those, those three days. The March public meeting really was when we had a draft plan together. And um, it was a little different format. Uh, we had a presentation and got feedback on the direction of the plan. And some, some revisions were made uh, based on comments uh, at that meeting. So a little bit about what we heard. Uh, and this is, this is important uh, for you just to, uh, it's very rare that you hear from hundreds of people that, that you all represent in town. So, um, hopefully, this part of the document, the, the front section of the document, where it talks about what we heard during the public meetings and the survey is really helpful. We, we asked some, some questions about what, what folks value most. So people really value the small town character of the town of Franklin. Uh, the scenic beauty was mentioned a lot. The fact that you could walk nearly any street and look up and, and see a forested mountain ridge line. Um, the access to nature that provides. A lot of people stay here. Uh, because of these things, a lot of people move here because of these things. Um, a lot of people have businesses that are built around um, uh, these things. Um, the, the people and the sense of community was mentioned. Uh, the access that you have to, to both nature and, and cities. Safety was mentioned. The festivals and events that, that you all uh, do so well um, during normal times. Um, and then uh, uh, family and, and just the whole nature of the town. We also asked uh, a lot about development, future development. What do people uh, like uh, and want to see more of in town? What do folks want to see less of or not see in town? Uh, and you see some pictures uh, from the residential side of things that, that folks uh, wanted to see more of. Uh, so single family homes, um, front porches, um, and smaller lots with parking in the rear, uh, some, some shared green space in some new development, um, and also a little bit about town architecture and amenities that folks want. And also we heard some things that people wanted to see uh, less of or, or not see, so, so um, and that's an example of front-loaded townhomes that have garages in the front. I think people prefer to have the garages behind or uh, a 
better facade. Um, from commercial development, people liked the pedestrian scale feel of, of downtown Franklin and wanted to reinforce that uh, in and around downtown. Um, and then um, we heard that you know, people didn't like strip malls with no landscaping. The good news is your UDO, your development ordinance that controls commercial development, does have a lot of uh, planting requirements and, and, and trees. You see angles. Um, that's very different than this, right? Um, you have uh, parking planted uh, islands and parking lot, and it's Justin's job to pull folks' feet to the fire and make sure that happens. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a good trend. Um, we also talked a lot about downtown uh, during the process. Ask folks what what people want, where they want it, what are some of the um, big big things that the, the public sector could help with, or, or um, private development uh, could be freed up to do. Uh, and we talk a lot about that in, in in the plan. In terms of recommendations, the future land use plan is a central um, feature of the plan. Um, the 2007 plan really didn't have a, a future land use map. Uh, it talked uh, more about uh, just land use policies and, and, and those those policies uh, were helpful um, but they could be interpreted different ways in some cases so it's really hard to say whether something was in line with the plan or not in line with the plan because it was just text space uh, there was not a lot of graphics or, 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 or maps in the previous plan so that's one thing we wanted to do a little bit differently um, and uh, this is a general land use flat pattern uh, it, it talks about kind of different uh, different areas of the character areas of town. So where we want to, to reserve some land for employment uses, and office and, and industrial and uh, jobs, and, and, and where we want commercial really to, to, to be uh, be encouraged, and different gradations of, of residential uh, in terms of design and intensity. Uh, but it, it is descriptive, it's not prescriptive. So um, uh, it does leave a little bit of flexibility uh, for uh, development and, um, and the designers of that development to, to make a case for things. We, we wanted to leave some flexibility for this body and, and for the planning board. Uh, a couple of the um, highlights, you'll see some of the, the commercial areas in red and also the, the striped uh, area, the mixed use areas. Downtown is a, it's a distinct, distinct area, so we wanted to treat that differently. Um, also, there's some office and employment areas along the key corridors uh, where there are those opportunities. Just looking at the residential side of things, there's open space residential, which is which is really uh, areas with a lot of uh, environmental constraints. So once you get up on the steep bridges uh, outside of town, uh, there are some slope issues and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and, and this doesn't say you can't have development, but you need to balance development with the natural uh, resources and the features on that site. Uh, then you have low low density uh, or low to medium density residential, uh, which is really a, a lot of uh, the areas closer to town where you have access to water and sewer and, and really good opportunities for housing. That's one thing that you all haven't had uh, a lot recently is new um, housing. Uh, so it's, it's encouraging, the scenic bridge development is encouraging um, because you do have folks that are looking for, for new homes in the area. Uh, and um, one of the things that it, it, would, be, it would be a win-win for, for them to locate inside the town of Franklin instead of in Macon County where there's less services and less access to things. So, so we wanted to point out uh, where that sort of thing would be encouraged. And then there's also some, some opportunity for traditional neighborhoods. And, and these, are, these are areas that are close into town and, and really could have um, get more people within walking distance of downtown. There's also a, 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 a different character areas on the non-residential side of things. And I can answer questions about those, but neighborhood mixed use of areas within neighborhoods close to residential that are meant to be more small scale and fit in uh, with existing neighborhoods. Uh, and then urban mixed use, which is really opportunities for redevelopment uh, in some key sites. Downtown, which is uh, a very unique place, and then commercial and office employment. So from a land use and housing uh, standpoint, one thing we wanted to do uh, look for areas to allow a mix of single family uh, and, and even some small scale attached residential units closer to downtown. Um, this was uh, one thing um, that is a barrier in your current zone code. Your R1 district, which accounts for um, probably 90% of your, your zoning, your residential zoning, has a minimum lot size of 10,000 square feet. Uh, and in some cases, uh, 
there's there's opportunity for smaller lots, especially um, close into downtown. If new design criteria, so if you have a good design that fits uh, into the context of, of kind of the close in neighborhoods in downtown, you have an acre of property or, uh, or, or, or a couple acres, you can make a new development fit in there. Uh, and it could be, a, those lots could be a little smaller than 10,000 square feet. So some flexibility uh, would be needed there. You have a uh, traditional neighborhood overlay district that, that could accommodate that as long as you update it with some design criteria. The um, other thing we want to do is just update the zoning to encourage uh, new housing in areas served by water and sewer. You have some, some close-in neighborhoods like on Green Street, for instance, um, that uh, you have R1 zoning, uh, which requires 40% open space. Uh, and uh, in some cases, those older neighborhoods don't have any uh, open space or parks. So you're requiring a new, new development on five acres to have 40% set aside as open space. Uh, and that is a barrier for a new development. And you have some potential to have infill neighborhoods that, are, that fit the neighborhood, that are close in, and where you have infrastructure. Um, so in some cases, we're saying you might want to add some flexibility there and have a lower open space requirement in some of those areas. Uh, on the flip side, in some of that R1 zoning district, you have a lot of steep slopes and some other uh, key views and stuff you want to you preserve. In, the, in those areas, uh, there's that open space residential category that says we need to preserve those, uh, those views and, and those natural resources by clustering development away from those features. Uh, so we want to keep some of that, uh, those requirements in some of those areas. So really it's a fine tuning of your existing policy uh, in order to better accommodate some of the goals. With one of the goals in being preserved natural resources and you're doing some good things there, but also another goal is encourage some new development in the right places. Uh, appearance and gateways was another thing that we talked about a lot. Um, you have some key entry corridors, um, Georgia Road and Highlands and, and Main Street, um, and, and some, of, some of those are, are incrementally improving already. Uh, and encur encouraging more of that incremental improvement would be good. Um, in some cases, your existing regulations will do just fine uh, as new development comes. And, and, um, and, and, and you, they follow the, your, your existing ordinance, that's fine. In some, some other areas, you might want to consider uh, some additional landscaping requirements, particularly along building frontages. Uh, that's, that's an opportunity where you're not going to see a lot of wholesale redevelopment. Um, Highlands Road is one of those where you have kind of narrow parcels and you're not going to get um, a lot of redevelopment up and down, but you can incrementally improve the look of that if you, if you I did an overlay with, with some landscaping improvements. Uh, downtown, updating regulations to match uh, the historic character of downtown is something uh, that we're, we're recommending. Um, and, and that goes with reinforcing uh, the thing, one of the things that, that folks love about uh, Town Franklin. So the relationship design. So what is, what is the future land use map do? It doesn't replace the zoning map. Uh, what it does is it provides support for rezonings. Uh, or, or denials, uh, for that matter. Um, it doesn't impact existing entitlements. Uh, so uh, if, if something's zoned a certain way, this doesn't revoke that zone. It really talks about new rezonings. Um, so, um, so that's important. Uh, you have a lot of commercial zoning that's, that's out there, and it doesn't really change that. Uh, but what it does do is that where you could potential have, have uh, new office or employment or, or residential, that's, that's what this map says. Um, there's also a, a kind of a backup plan. If we miss something that is a good opportunity and someone brings forward a good opportunity to the planning board and this body, um, and the rezoning uh, is supported and it's not in line with the future land use map, that's okay. Uh, the, the, the protocol for that is that rezoning updates the future land use map. And that's something uh, that, that, that will just happen uh, here on out due to state legislation. Um, Justin mentioned it earlier, but as of 2021, you have to have a comprehensive plan in place uh, in order to have them. Uh, so that's a, one of the good reasons you're having this, and it's gonna be fresh, and it's gonna be um, kind of reflecting uh, the current current line of thinking. There are some high priority zoning changes that we, we are recommending, uh, and this is something that, this plan doesn't do those changes. This plan just points out 
those are priorities to, to, to think through and, and have some additional conversation about. The planning board is going to be instrumental in that, uh, and, and Justin and the planning board can work through some of these and um, uh, develop some, some text amendments to your zoning code. And this is, is basically just, just cleaning up, making uh, that zoning code implement this plan. And the zoning code is imp imperfect. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the, the um, the most elegant tool, but it's the best tool that we have to implement this plan, in, in some cases from a land use perspective. Uh, so that's, uh, those are kind of laid out there. And I talked a little bit about the downtown district, splitting the R1 district into, into two districts to where we can actually um, remove some of the barriers to new residential development in those close to neighborhoods. And then allow some flexibility uh, in some areas real close to downtown. Speaking of downtown, um, uh, we did talk a lot about recommendations in around downtown. Uh, those revolve around pedestrian facilities and improving crossings. Um, have some recommendations on sidewalk dining, improvements to the town square and, uh, and back alleys, um, enhanced facade grants, so um, encouraging uh, business owners and building uh, owners uh, to dress up some of the facades on the front and backs of buildings. Uh, because a lot of your opportunity for sidewalk dining, maybe it, it is constrained um, on, on Main Street, but maybe on, 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 the, on the back alley there's opportunity there. Uh, so all those kind of go hand in hand. Uh, also coordination with HCA on the hospital site. It's on the doorstep of downtown, so what happens there uh, is really important uh, for the town. The Nikwasi uh, Cultural Arts District is something that we looked at uh, a lot with this plan. The mound area, um, the tribe uh, is, is, is thinking about investing a lot of um, money in a, in a cultural center. Um, it's an opportunity for redevelopment. Uh, so we did uh, envision uh, that area a little bit, some public uh, realm improvements, streetscape improvements, but also the form of potential redevelopment uh, in and around there. Uh, and then also we did look at the, the Whitmire property as well as an opportunity um, to, to address a, a couple of the needs uh, in, in East Franklin. Um, one of the needs in East Franklin is encouraging investment, so public and private investment in East Franklin. Um, access to, to parks uh, is another thing. It's, uh, they, they don't have a lot of existing residents don't have a lot of access to parks over there. Uh, and then the other um, need is is housing, new new housing, market rate housing. Um, and the town owns a 12 acre property over there. This is not meant to be a, a development plan, but it's meant to be um, uh, uh, kind of one option uh, and meant to uh, really further discussion about what to do about that piece of property uh, and uh, potentially how you can address some of their goals uh, in a public private partnership. Um, there's some next steps and how to move forward and, and continue that conversation in the plan. Economic development was, was a big discussion point. Um, broadband, particularly. Uh, we, we had a lot of discussion about what can we do as a town to move that conversation forward, um, and how can we, we support downtown, the streets of Franklin, um, existing uh, technology businesses, and, and also encourage that investment in East Franklin. Cultural and natural resources were important promoting outdoor recreation and heritage, improving access to parks and greenways. There's some specific recommendations in the plan uh, about each of those. Uh, one of which is, is the uh, Bartram Trail. Uh, the Bartram Trail is a 115-mile uh, regional hiking trail that, that currently traverses the south side of Franklin. And you get people from all over the country and, and really the world coming to, to hike the trail. You are. Uh, uh, are a trail community already. The, the things that you are doing to, to support the Appalachian Trail and and, and be a um, be a welcoming community related that is great. Um, the Bartram Trail is another opportunity. Uh, and rerouting that trail through uh, uh, along the Little Tennessee and through downtown uh, would allow users of that trail to get closer uh, to, to to downtown, um, have a better experience uh, as they walk the trail through town. Because right now it just goes along the road in the south side of uh, town and, and it's not the best experience, but you will have the, 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 um, the greenway uh, that with, a, with a small connection and, and coordination um, with the Forest Service, uh, rerouting it through town is a possibility that could have uh, really beneficial implications.
implications uh, from a tourism standpoint. Other transportation issues, uh, uh, sidewalks uh, in the downtown and then off the hill. Once you get off the hill, some of the sidewalks are in a little bit of disrepair. Uh, but um, I, I think uh, the planning department's already had some progress there, inventorying some of the highest priority ADA issues and, and that sort of thing. So that's, that's encouraging. And also developing some standards uh, for, for transportation. Um, so, so that's uh, kind of the, the, the highlights. And then I'm happy to answer any questions um, you may have. Any questions from the board? If not, thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Okay, moving along. <clears throat> Uh, is uh, Ms. Eisenbron here? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to ask you kind of cut it short when you, if you would. We've got a lot to cover tonight. Okay. I'll be as brief as I can. Mayor, Welcome Vice aboard. Mayor, thank you. Is that better? Can you hear me? So, that's okay. I'm Elaine Eisenbron. I'm the new executive director for the Nequasi Initiative. Um, I've been here a very short time, very excited about being here, and I do have to say that I've lived in quite a few places, and I've never felt more welcome. What a great community you have, and you folks all as leaders are setting the tone for that, and so I thank you. So uh, you asked me to be brief, and I'll be as brief as I can. I'm here tonight to talk about the Nequasi Mound, and you guys had the foresight and the wisdom and the courage to transfer that deed about a year ago. And now it's time to leverage that action. And by leveraging that action, um, what I'm talking about is let's take that Nequasi Mound, tie it into what the Stewart Plan was talking about in terms of making that a uh, gateway to the community and really getting people to um, focus on what's here in Franklin, what this community has to share, and um, what assets you have. So it's a community asset, there's no doubt, and that's often more important than a cash asset. So um, our board of directors has looked at all the different options in terms of what can we do and how and where. We have a kiosk all built, we have signage that's um, it, uh, in production, and it's going to make just a really nice viewpoint. It's gonna attract people. I don't know how many of you have been out to see the Cowie installation. The Cowie installation is simply gorgeous. It's attractive. You step up to look at the sign, or you step onto the platform, and um, it just sucks you in. It just makes you feel gosh, I'm a part of all this beauty and this heritage and this culture, and that's what we need to do here as well. So after uh, a lot of consideration, the best spot to put this kiosk that's built and the signage to attract attention coming in through the gateway is on the Sanders property, which my understanding is was it was gifted to the city with the intent of having an interpretive site, a place that would really set the mound off and attract um, visitors. And so, excuse me, I'm here tonight to say we really appreciate its 0.02 acres, having you guys um, take an action tonight that would allow us to move forward with the construction and implementation of the um, kiosk and the signage create educational opportunities, attract people to Franklin, and um, just enhance the walkability, connecting to the Bartram Trail and the Greenway, and we're working with the Trail of Tears to get federal designation. So, I hope that was short enough. <laughs> Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Taney, I think that uh, so if I understand correct, what y'all are asking for is permission to use the Sanders, that little triangular, weird-shaped little piece of property uh, to the north of the mound. We'd like, uh, the options that we envision are either you transfer that little tiny piece to Nequasi Initiative 
and we landscape it and put the kiosk and such there, or create some sort of a long-term lease on that property as a second alternative. Okay. All right. Any comment from the board? Or, or questions. Or questions. You have a motion, Ms. Tanning? Uh, if the, the council's ready to act on it now, it would be to approve the, the license agreement that, that I've prepared uh, for you. I will say that I think uh, it's a discussion item maybe for, for the future to okay. talk about what the long-term ownership of the interest of that parcel of property is. You could transfer it to the Quasi Initiative and subject it to the same requirements that you've already put the mound under in terms of preservation use as part of a, a cultural historical site. Um, this is the fastest way to get there and to let them get underway with the kiosk that they're describing to you. And there are several steps in the process, as you all remember, it takes a while to, to do. Uh, there's a, a requirement for you to have a public notice and, and so forth before you would transfer the property altogether if that's what you end up wanting to do with it. For now, giving them the permission to, to use it in the manner that they've discussed, and it is within the, the intent of the transfer to begin with, uh, as Ms. Eisenbrown says, the deed says it's to, to be held and used by the town of Franklin for access to parking for and placement of a monument marker all in conjunction with the Quasi Indian Mount parcel. So the use is very much in, in line with it. If the, the council is ready to do so now, uh, a motion to approve the license agreement will accomplish that. So we're, we're, we're not deeding the property, but the license agreement. And you did, you did find out that the town actually does own this. <laughs> okay, because that is one weird piece of property. It, it is, I'll, well, and I'll, I think what's especially strange about it is, and I, I don't know, we have not done a new survey, and that's not something we've had occasion to do yet. We, we sure could. Uh, it looks to me like um, when it was transferred by the Sanders, they had in mind to give the town, I would think, all the way to the easternmost edge of the land there and for whatever reason that didn't quite happen and there is a little bitty strip of probably 10 feet by 20 feet or so that wasn't transferred I, and I, I think mr. Collins and I can tell you that probably the road had a lot to do with that so well if, if there's no objection from the board uh, we if, how, how quick are y'all ready to go with putting the kiosk up as I say it's built ready to go the sign is still in production I would say within a couple months we'd be ready to can you get it really get the implementation get it up there before the tourist season yeah okay all right what's the pleasure board could we lost license some yes this is a question this, yes sir licensing is, is this a lease is that what it's, is it a lease or, or explain that to me the difference between a license and a lease so a license is just permission just a formal permission for for somebody else to do something on your property i mean okay. you could you could have done it as an easement potentially that's that's a more you know that's a that's a land um, that's a right you know that's that's a deeded interest in the property um, I think ultimately something like that or a long-term lease or a an outright conveyance again subject to all the requirements you already put on the whole mound property would be an appropriate thing to consider it takes a while and so this is this license is is a a means to give the Quasi Initiative the formal uh, approval to, to construct the, the kiosk as, as they've shown it to you. It protects, it requires them to, to provide you protection in terms of insurance for that property and to, to keep it up and so forth. Um, and it gets us there quicker uh, for now. Like I said, I think a, a, an outright conveyance is probably a, something to, to think about doing. Yes, Mark. I would just like to, to thank the Sanders family for doing, you know, for the gift of this property. It was a long time ago. I, I kind of remember it. Um, I wasn't with the town then, but I, I know that they were really concerned that access with the road coming in, that there would be some way for a sign to go up just in case the property changed hands or whatever, that that piece would be secured. So uh, I want to thank them for their foresight. And Mr. Sanders, of course, is gone. Yes, thank you. That being said, that's what the property was intended for. I, I make a motion that we go forward with the licensing agreement with the Quasi Initiative. Just a second. All in favor? 
and I didn't hear any discussion. So, <laughs> all right, you got your marching orders. We'll get that done really quickly. Thank you, you very much, you everyone. Get, you get to town, we put you to work. Now you get. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Okay. Uh, discussion on the proposal for making new beginnings is Mr. Bork here. Yes. Well, yes, sir. The public hearings, were we supposed to close them and then the public session? I we thought I did close them. Oh. And then nobody signed up for the okay. public session. Fair so, enough. yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Mr. Bork. All right, sir. Going to ask you to make it brief again tonight, sir. Well, real briefly, um, back in February, um, there was an article in the newspaper about homelessness in Macon County. And the next month, I came in and presented to the council just some basic information about homelessness that we've experienced in, in serving that population of Macon County and Franklin. Um, after that meeting, um, the mayor asked me to come up with some sort of a proposal on how to um, gain some more information and deal with learning about the homelessness in Franklin and Macon County. So I wrote a letter and made a proposal to both the council and the commissioners um, with the idea being that it's a community-wide problem. It's not just Franklin, it's Macon and Franklin that uh, has this challenge to deal with. So at this point, um, I guess we're at the point of just, you know, what is your recommendation? Where do you want to go from here? Um, we still continue and will continue as making new beginnings to serve the homeless population here, um, irrespective of what happens either way. So um, I may basically made the proposal that I think both government bodies uh, need to start looking into this and get, as the mayor mentioned, a handle on it. Okay. Is there any discussion from the board? Okay, Bob, we'll just, we'll just take it under consideration. I don't know that the board's ready to, I, I don't know that we're, that we have anything real concrete yet. Are we talking money? Are we talking a site? Just what we are talking about. Yeah, and I had not included any kind of financial backing or that, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know how I'm not very familiar with how council goes about doing those sorts of things um, and the same thing with the county commissioners. Um, I do recommend that both bodies work on this together. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard from Commissioner Tate, um, but since the COVID, yeah. not much on that, so I don't know where we stand as far as the county is going on. Um, but like I said, we'll still be here serving the population as long as we can. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, in, in light of the, the current situation, how has that impacted what you're what you're doing? Is it? Um, we've. It's interesting. We expected to see some more uh, uh, clients come in and, and in need, um, but since the governor had put a moratorium on evictions uh, and also on termination of any utilities we've seen a slight decline in those folks needing services. Mm -hmm. um, I've been keeping an eye on what the media is saying and what people in the know say about after COVID and all the restrictions, what happens. Um, most of what I've been reading is many people, uh, David mentioned this, many people spent their PPE money. Uh, it's gone. So a lot of what we're reading and thinking about is evictions are going to spike really quickly. Uh, the money's gone and people don't have money to pay for the housing anymore. Um, last year we saw a slight decline in what we the point in time count and we've experienced in 2019 it went from three to four months to find permanent housing to six to eight months to find permanent housing. So it's getting more and more difficult, and I really emphasize the comprehensive plan. Housing is really hard to find here, um, short term and long term. I don't think we'll solve it tonight, Bob. No, I don't. <laughs> but it is certainly com COVID is certainly certainly uh, complicated the whole situation. 
give me a call later on let's let's talk I've a little further yes yes ma'am weren't you wanting you were wanting a task force set up when you envision that i mean are you wanting like someone from the town council someone from the commissioners i mean when you're talking about cooperation i'm just kind of um, my, my thought was somebody on a council and commissioner level to lend emphasis of the importance of it. Um, clearly, members of police force, uh, EMS, would have to be involved to some degree. Um, they spend a lot of time, both in the town and the county, all the agencies spend a lot of time uh, dealing with homeless folks in the, in the area. Um, and we work with every one of those and there's a lot of cooperation that already happens um, but I think that trying to elevate that we still get folks that say I don't know you that you exist um, which is amazing to us because of the articles and that sort of thing but nonetheless uh, we still hear those comments um, uh, there's a lot of folks out there that that are chronic um, there are a lot of folks that you know just something happened COVID happened and now they're unemployed. Um, so things happen to folks and you know I, I think the emphasis would be to have a council level and a commissioner level, uh, some involvement of other agencies obviously. Um, some counties have done an application process from the community. Um, some have done some variation of an appointment and an application. And so you know it all depends on how uh, the council and commissioners feel like they want to move forward. Um, I'd like to say something too. Um, in your reference to the comp plan about uh, actually reducing restrictions to lead to more affordable housing, uh, the first time I heard that was when I went to Raleigh to the town and state dinner, and there is data coming out that uh, onerous regulations um, for, for building and site size has led to uh, maybe an unnecessary increase in housing costs. In, that information is coming out and I think it is filtering its way down it's certainly something we looked at in the comp plan that if you actually reduce your requirements of, uh, of site size it reduces the overall cost of housing which ultimately will help in what you're after and that may be the most appropriate uh, beneficial thing we can do or the county commissioners can do or any legislators can do absent of funding uh, a facility is to actually look at regulations and say is this something that is inhibiting um, somebody from being able to afford to live in a house and, and actually some deregulation uh, of housing standards and site size can ultimately help your goal. California is a classic example of that. Median, in, median household um, value is $600,000 in California. That's, that's a problem. And their their homeless population is <coughs> doubling. Okay, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Let me uh, ask permission of the board to do something. Uh, we're running pretty long tonight. I have two ceremonial duties, which I would like to go ahead and take care of now, if I may. Because oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> you ain't never seen anything you've had the evil eye of the man <laughs> take it all back okay <laughs> we have guests coming so oh. we have guests on their way I thought they're, they're not here they're i not thought here. they were here okay i i stand corrected but i may bring it back up okay Discussion on the town of Franklin Water and Sewer Comp Plan. <laughs> Madam Manager, go Now that you've it. called me out, let me beg the board for <laughs> somewhere some. around. You put the eye on me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Reed Council, what you have before you tonight is um, last month at our May meeting, we had a proposal from Weathers Ravenel and looking at a water and sewer comp plan for the next 10 years. And what we're asking for tonight is adoption of that comp plan with the understanding that each year your rates will come before council. So just because we've adopted that plan and asking for it tonight, the council will always still be involved on an annual basis as far as their rate structure is concerned. It's basically just a road, a road map and a guide 
for the public and staff to understand where um, we're going in the next 10 to 15 years. You need a motion? Are we? You need a motion? Uh, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I okay. move that we adopt it. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? I think somebody parked under the helicopter and set the <laughs> alarm <laughs> off out there. Is it going to get off? Yeah. Nope, it's gone. Get your shoes, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we finally found something for you to do. Watch the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, Madam Manager, may I proceed to new business now? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take action on the uh, special use application for the Scenic Ridge uh, development. Uh, any discussion from the board before we uh, move on the motion? If not, I'll entertain the uh, motion to approve the uh, Scenic Ridge Development Special Use Application. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Did you get, the, did you get it there, Mr. Trapp? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, okay. Okay, Town of Franklin fiscal year budget. Uh, any further discussion on the budget from the board tonight? I make if, a motion to approve it. Okay, we have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Okay. Right along. All right, the Town of Franklin comp plan. Is there uh, any further discussion on the comp plan as presented? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. I, I, oh, here we are. I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes because okay. I know we have we have Jake here and Justin's up sure. there at the podium ready to yell at me. But uh, I, I, I was there during a lot of those meetings. I was on on that committee and, and I like the plan. I just am hesitant to adopt a plan considering this is the first time that the public has had uh, access to it. I'd like to I'd like to sit on it and have public comment on it next meeting and then uh, revisit voting on it. But Let's, hasn't it been on the it's been website a, for months? And we've had the charrettes. We've had big crowds attended. I don't, what, what would be the value in delaying it? I, from my understanding, this is the first big unveiling of it to the public. And I think it's appropriate to it. The original plan, the impetus was to present it to council, wait for a month, and then either approve or not approve at the next meeting. Of course, COVID messed that up. We were trying to avoid getting into budgetary sessions. That obviously didn't happen because we just approved the budget. It's a good plan, and I support it. I'm just hesitant to vote on something so freshly being presented. I mean, are you? Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. We did have the charrettes. We did have the walking tours. We have advertised it. It has been in all the newspapers. I think that if anybody had any problems with it, we would have had something said tonight from the public. And I, I really, I really think we need to move on this thing. They put a lot of effort in it. The town, everybody has really worked hard on this. I just don't see a value in, in holding up. Yes, with comments. What is the downside if it was? Addressed in July rather than tonight. Uh, it'd be just a, a month later with not having a comp plan, and we wouldn't have Mr. Uh, Trotsky here in July to answer any questions. You not? Are you talking about having another presentation? No, no, no. Of course not. It just, from my understanding of this board and the actions we take, when something like this is presented. We wait a month to digest it and for public input, and then we vote on it. And that was, from my understanding, the original plan. Code has messed up the dates. Am I am I incorrect in in my understanding of how the process was going to be? Well, uh, originally, we were hoping to uh, have this in April, yeah. and then with an adoption in May. But then we kept having to push it back because we couldn't have the public here and everything. But we did we didn't have anybody come to speak on it tonight either. After advertising it. And, Put it on Facebook. And I, I like it. I mean, yeah. like I said, I've got a couple fingerprints on it. My kids are in the picture. I was very involved. Yes, Ms. Torty. It's been advertised. Mm -hmm. Have you received any comments, positive or negative, about it? Yes, throughout the whole process. But like I said, I'm not certain that people actually understand that we're prepared to adopt it tonight. I, I'm not opposed to the plan. I let, just let me just suggest think it behooves us to get some public feedback if there is going to be any before we adopt it. It's a 
13 year plan, if we base it on how long the last one lasted for, I, I don't see how waiting for 30 days could hurt us just to let the public actually go through it to uh, comb the beach, so to speak. But, but, but I'm gonna jump back in again. I don't think we can put on again in a month before July to have people come in and look at this plan and all again. I don't know what else we could have done uh, really and truly, Mr. Culpepper, really, this, this has been vetted just to the nth degree. I don't disagree, Bob. I was there. I was in the I meetings. I know you were. I was there with you. And uh, I, I don't think you were on the actual committee, but... No, not on the committee, okay. but I made the walk into it. In fact, some of those photographs are mine, so... I, and I'm uh, not opposed to the plan. I just, I don't see how it would hurt us to get more public comment. And I, I don't want to throw a monkey wrench in it, but... It, it, it's a good plan. It'll stand on its own, and a month from now we can revisit the idea. Well, I would say that you are throwing a monkey wrench into it, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, because we had a public session tonight. We had public comment period. It's been advertised. It's been posted in the agenda. It's been everywhere. What can we do between now and and, and next and, and July that would change your mind? We've sat on it since April. I don't think another month's going to hurt us. Yeah, COVID has thrown a monkey wrench into everything. We, we weren't able to do it the way we were going to do it, where it was going to be presented public comment in April, then we we're going to vote on it in May. All I'm asking is the same exact situation just a couple months later. We heard it in June, let's vote on it in July. I'm going to vote for it then just like I'm going to vote for it now. But I don't think the public has had the time to digest it. David, if it... Um, I've been really happily surprised by the number of people who have told me that they have looked at this, that they've looked at it, they've gone on, online and looked at it. I think a lot of people have. I, maybe people just aren't speaking out right now, they have so many other things on their minds, but I, I do think a lot of people have, and it's been accessible, I mean it's on the website and it's been advertised and gotten a lot of press. I, I don't disagree, it, it also affects many more people than just town residents. I mean, if, if we have jurisdiction outside of the town, and let, it, let me just it, suggest for the, the council to consider, it, it is, a, a, as land use regulation goes, it's among the more malle malleable things you can do. If you decide, you know, if somebody comes back and says, well, I missed the chance to comment on this, and I think you're missing the boat in this area, you ought to consider, you know, changing your plan. You can do that pretty readily much much easier than if this was a mastery zone and i'll say we've been taking comment for mm -hmm. all the way up till we made changes yesterday from comments i mean we made some minor changes and it's been uh, it's been tweaked as i mean as, i feel like as much as we would we've and that was all from just stuff from the public meetings we've had and everything so we've been adding some things here and there planning board added some more you know and so on um, uh, Jake said the last time we actually got actually got somebody to comment on the website since we've had where people could submit comments was back in March. I, I guess I'm confused. Why were we gonna do the presentation in April and then wait until May to vote? Why was that part of the original? Well, at plan? that time we were looking at it because we were going to present it and then give the council the council time to look over it which we didn't get to because of all the COVID, but that's why we got it on and we put it on the website early. And so since it's been out in the public longer than anticipated with on the website as a draft, we were planning on in May, or April, here's your draft, look over it, take your time, we'll talk about it next month. And then of course everything happened, we weren't able to do that. But so we still, when we got ready for the draft, we still put it on the website, publicized it, it's out there, look at it, um, they come back to, you know, <laughs> telling everybody on the board a couple times that it's out there, look at it, and so it's kind of, we've been doing that, but longer. <coughs> okay. All right. Uh, I think we pretty well hashed it out. Let's call for the motion here, oh, if we may. Okay. Uh, somebody want to make the motion we adopt the... I, I, I made one. a motion. I, I, I want to ask one other, just one other quick question. Yes, What's the cost to if you ran, ran it again legal? Oh, to, no. I mean, you'd have. We to don't have to run it again. We just vote on it then. You don't have to run it again if you we should have to. I was just wondering about that too. 
I mean, okay, we have a motion on the floor. Yes, Ms. Collins. Well, thank you. Uh, it's just, it's in the discretion of the board. We've had the public hearing. The board can vote on it tonight. The board can vote on it next month. It's just a discretionary matter. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, so I'll call for the vote. All in favor? So it's unanimous. Okay. <laughs> it was, it was going to be unanimous anyway. I, just, I wanted to give the public some time. I don't, I don't think that's wrong. No, it's no not. that is not wrong. I agree with you on that. But Can I say one quick thing before we finish? Yes, sir. Um, before we finish, I just want to thank Jake and all of his team and Stuart for working on this. They've been great to work with. I'd recommend Stuart for any other town in the future. Also, uh, Stacy Guppy, who is a subcontractor for them, and Christy Carter with Traffic Engineering. Um, they were just great to work with, and I want to also thank all of the stakeholders that agreed to let us interview them, and our steering committee. Because steering committee, we had, I think, like five meetings and some long long nights and uh, David was on it um, I just want to thank all of them and they're listed in the plan but I want to make sure that we appreciate their time and effort put towards it and um, I can't just put the housing part home enough it's uh, some people don't realize it but housing is very much needed in Franklin um, it's seen when I was talking to the stakeholders and the steering committees Duly noted. Thank you, sir. And thank you too, Justin. Absolutely. You did That's a great job. Magnificent job. Let me ask the board, would you have any objection if I, I went ahead with these two ceremonial things? We've got people waiting. <laughs> thank you. Madam Manager, do I have you? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. The, uh, okay, I was going to say, let them know. <laughs> what, I, what I have right now is the swearing in of our new police chief. I'll ask, uh, uh, Bill Harrell and his family to come up and we have a little corridor right here and I want y'all to stand here facing the audience. I'm not facing the camera. Y'all are. Come on up. Um, there's officers got, yes, coming, coming in. in. We've got more coming in. Okay. Yeah. I can see out the open door. So. <laughs> y'all step right on back here. I don't want you on there. Come on in. Time to loot the food king. All up here. All right, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce uh, our new police chief, Bill Harrell, to everybody here tonight. Uh, I've known Bill a uh, many, many number of years. And uh, it's my pleasure to swear him in tonight as our new police chief. Bill, if you would, if you'll raise your uh, right hand. And this is his family. And uh, I state your name, do solemnly swear. Uh, William Eugene Harold, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. I. Do solemnly and sincerely swear. I do solemnly and sincerely swear that I will be faithful. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina. And bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers. And to the constitutional powers and authorities. And authorities which are, which are or may be established or may be established for the government thereof. For the government thereof. And that I will endeavor. And that I will endeavor to support, to support, maintain and defend, maintain and defend the constitution of said state, the constitution of said state, not inconsistent, not inconsistent with the constitution of the United States, with the constitution of the United States, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. I do swear. I do swear that I will truly and honestly. That I will truly and honestly. Demean myself, demean myself in the office of chief of police, in the office of chief of police of the town of Franklin, of the town of Franklin, according to the best of my knowledge, according to the best of my knowledge and ability, and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome, Chief. 
My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have one other, Madam Manager. One other? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, I just had a happy one. Now I've got a, a very, very sad one. Extremely sad. Come on up. <laughs> Tyra and I probably go back together further than anybody else here in the room tonight. Is it social distancing that I can <laughs> hug you? I want to present this to Tyra Dalster in recognition of your 30 years of service to the town of Franklin and Macon County tonight. Tyra, gonna miss you, dear. Really are. Thank you so much. Good luck. Did you want to say anything? talk about this a whole lot at the office because um, all of us get teary-eyed but um, I've been really blessed to um, work here at the town of Franklin and finish out my career in local government it's been uh, it's been great I've got a lot of uh, friends and uh, my work family I'm gonna miss you so much uh, but I'm looking forward to my new adventures um, on my journey so um, we have a lot of great people here in the town of Franklin that are real dedicated and uh, and loyal. And uh, my role here as a finance officer definitely would not have been as successful without the great department heads that we have, um, the employees, and especially my co-workers here at Town Hall. Um, it's definitely been a team effort, and uh, I appreciate you all. I'm going to miss you, and you can catch me at the beach. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Pamela, you want to say a word or two, sir? I want to put you on the spot. That's okay. Um, I am very eager and excited to have this opportunity. Uh, I spent most of my career working toward this position. I've been blessed uh, to be the chief in the town of Hollins uh, with a great group and a great community for the last nearly 15 years. And uh, I look forward to what I call home uh, for the next however long God sees fit. Um, but uh, I am excited to work with this team that's standing in the back. I'm excited to uh, you know, build and strengthen relationships with other agencies uh, around us, uh, namely with the Sheriff's Office. And, um, and I look forward to us moving our department uh, ahead uh, from where we currently are. Uh, I've got tough shoes to fill. Chief Adams is not only a dear friend, uh, but he has done an excellent job. Uh, but uh, I look forward uh, to this team in the back again, as I said before, uh, helping me serve our community to the best of our ability in the most efficient and effective way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. We'll call a uh, five minute, maybe a ten minute recess. We've been sitting here a long time. And uh, Bill and Kyra, I know there are folks that want to speak to y'all too. So let's take ten. Is that all right with the board? Yeah. Okay. I'll right. take it next month, that ten. Oh, come <laughs> 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 we Okay, this is Bobby. I'm going to leave the camera running during the break, but I'm going to kill the audio. Yeah. So, they're, say they're going to take a five-minute break. We'll usually take a little bit more. Tommy, Maxine.
Welcome to the That is Mr. Mayor. Oh, that's Bobby? Yeah, I guess it is. I didn't know if you didn't recognize you there. I'm just a and uh, he spoke very highly, so I just wanted to tell you. I had to introduce myself now as Justin. This is Justin. Good to have you here, and you know, he, uh, he just sings your praises. Yes, sir. I've had you sign that license I should have. You got hand sanitizer. I was going to say, was gonna say I'll go, let me go. I shook your hand. That's how it works. But if it's something in the John The other little part of Joe Sanders story is this one, <laughs> one, two. And it's, and it's about 18 feet long. And it's about 19 feet long. Very good, and he said that he would talk to these guys. Good work on the plan. He's put a lot. He is. I have seen Travis. He's busy as well. Yes. No, the one four people back here won't be here. And I think I still think it's a good idea. Anymore, people go, hey, what we need to is a that have our facial features on it, so it still looks like this. Next They're all being up about the storage units. We're going to allow storage units in there. We're going to be pleasant tonight. Yeah. 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 I've been thinking of getting some kind of smile on this thing. Yeah. Yeah. We should have it with our facial pictures on it. It looks really good. Yeah. 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 Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It may be the illusion you can do two things at the end. It's a, it's a vent. It's a one-way vent. So that if he has the virus, the mask is not going to be in there. Now that we're going to throw that gun in there. Yeah, we're going to throw that gun in there. I'm ready to come to you like those are our tails. Well, it'll uh, it, he'll probably advertise it. Like I said, he'll probably. 
Okay, they're starting back. I'm gonna hook the audio back in. Bye, Bob. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Bob. Well, I've lost the council. Jack just looks okay. Oh, we're back. Well, he's the one with Okay. Can you get back? Oops. <laughs> Graceful. <sighs> Close. <laughs> okay, man. Travis, you have one of these for me to sign. Does have a tape measure? Uh, uh, I mark. I mark. Well, I marked uh, it all up. Yeah, we can do it. Okay. Here. <laughs> Summer, we had that resolution in the agenda packet. Is it a long, isn't it real long? Yeah, we don't have to read it. We just need to give an update. No money. I read it. Okay. All right, we'll come back to order. Everybody in the back. Uh, we have uh, Southwestern North Carolina Home Construction, excuse me, consortium resolution and agreement. All of the towns and counties across uh, Region A are being asked to sign this or to agree to it. Uh, Madam Manager, you want to give us a brief overview? Yes, Bruce Mayor and Council. Um, basically what this is, this is a partnership with Region A. I believe Haywood County will be the lead agency in this matter. But it's basically a home investment partnership program that provides formula grants to state and local governments um, that can be used for building, buying, and rehabilitation of affordable housing. It's no cost to the town council to sign on. Um, it's just a basic way by um, signing on to this agreement where all the Western North Carolina towns and counties can get a, a bite of the pie. What is that? It doesn't even start till 2021. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Seems yeah. like propose given discuss yeah. our discussions <laughs> tonight. Yes, indeed. I make a motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. I'll second. Second. I'll second. All in favor. Okay. Discussion of Town of Franklin's July the 4th fireworks event. Uh, Madam Manager. Okay, Mr. Mayor and Council. What you have before you tonight is a request on behalf of the town administration and staff to host the first annual fireworks um, that the town would sponsor. And basically we would uh, contract with a group that would come in here and, and do fireworks on July 4th in lieu of the chamber having to postpone theirs due to social distancing requirements. We have spoken with um, our town attorney. He has looked over the agreement with this company. They're from Lexington, North Carolina. Um, we have funding available in our budget, um, so there'll be no additional funding needed. I believe Mr. Henning's comfortable with the local agreement and contract that this firm's committed to. We've worked with um, county officials, Mr. Jimmy Team. He is comfortable with the site and location. We have looked at a couple other sites. Um, I know we've looked maybe at Scenic Ridge and a couple others, and one of the big drawbacks there, I know Mr. Henning and I, is because the Whitmire's a great location because we do own the property. So it does cut down on a little bit of the liability. I think that's what we were, at least we would consume it. Um, yeah, and I think this, it, it allows you to make, the, and it, the contract that you're entering into to do this has a has a really good section about what the expectations are to to safely do it, and that's of course the, the biggest concern anyway. But to, that's a, I think an ideal property to be able to host it on, 
and not invite all of the public onto and have the same problem that the, the uh, chamber was having with their planned event. But they, this, the, the contract was fine, they're appropriately insured, um, and I, I feel fine with recommending it to them. Thank you. So after speaking with county officials, Ms. our fire marshal, Mr. Jimmy Team, he was comfortable with the property and the proposed location. He just wanted, you know, a, a vote from council, either yes or no, to move forward. That's what we're waiting on for him. We would encourage everyone, of course, Whitmire property would not be open to the public to come on there and view because of COVID-19 and social distri districting um, restrictions. However, we would encourage everyone to drive throughout town, park, um, uh, view from your, video or your car. One of the things we've worked with the local radio station with is actually doing a remote control access and during the 20 to 30 minute fireworks display, you could actually turn to your local radio station, hear patriotic music. Um, but that would be the big thing is we would just, you know, come, enjoy, stay in your car. We'll probably also reach out to some uh, local businesses. I know uh, Mr. Lewis and I talked about maybe reaching out to the former uh, Walmart location to see because that's a large parking area to see if they would open it up for people to view but something different because this year unfortunately the town we're not going to be able to do our normal July 4th festivities with your parade and the watermelon we won't be able to do that because of the COVID-19 restrictions but we thought this would be a great way to to be patriotic and give back to the community so and we're expecting this to end up being budget neutral. Yes. I think it was a great idea. Need a motion? Yeah, we'll take a motion. I'll make a motion. <laughs> we approve it. All right, is that a second? I'll second that with a thank you for the quick hard work. Yeah. I, I tell you, I really think the public will appreciate us yeah. doing that. So, you know, the one thing about the Whitmire property, you can see it from everywhere. That's yeah. what I was thinking. <laughs> you wouldn't have to sit right there. And sell seats in my front yard. Yeah. Oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all in favor? Thank you. All right. Okay, that takes care of July the 4th. All right, anybody else got anything for me? We'll go around the table. Ms. Horton, do you have anything you want to bring up, sir? No, I've enjoyed working with the board. I think uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't commend our staff for the good job putting the budget together under these unusual circumstances. On Justin, uh, working on our uh, comprehensive plan on the work that's been done on the water and sewer comprehensive plan. There's a lot of things have been happening here in Franklin over the past six months. And uh, it's great to work with a good staff and a fine board. So thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Lewis. Um, just thank Summer and, and uh, department heads for this budget, uh, especially being able to hold the line on the mill. Um, I think that's awesome. and. Uh, We've got stuff we're going to have to weather ahead, but so far I think we're in really good shape, and that's because of the people that's in this building and other buildings around, around and, and within our borders. So thanks to everybody that was involved with that, and I'm sure the residents will appreciate no tax increases oil. Well. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I agree. I second what Michael said. Yes, I don't have anything to add. Really, thank you all very much. Real quick, line, very brief. Tell us just a little bit about that renovation of the old building. Oh yes, uh, to me it's so exciting. Um, the one of the the oldest building in town in downtown Franklin, the oldest commercial building, that was the Talbot Realty Company uh, was sold, and um, the new owner is restoring it. Perfect. I mean, he has hired a company from Savannah that are experts in historic uh, preservation, and he's. He was explaining to me, if you take the old mortar out and put in new mortar, the new mortar doesn't work with those old bricks because it expands with the heat and water and so forth, and it causes old bricks to uh, crack. So you actually cause damage to the old bricks if you use new mortar. You have to use mortar that's specially formulated for the old bricks. And then he found um, a pile of bricks behind the building that apparently they had had a patio or something back there. So he, they were the, the same bricks that the building was made of. So it was 1886 is the year that building was built. And uh, I think it's really going to be beautiful. He's, What's going to be the use of it? He is going to rent out the first floor t for retail. He has an office on the second floor. He's, his business is software. Um, he wants to 
uh, restore there's a, an apartment he wants to fix up in it um, and um, rent it out um, and he said that in five years when his youngest child graduates from high school he'll be spending half his time here and half his time in Georgia where he lives so very nice man and a really a, an interesting process so <laughs> if you go by there um, take a look and see what they're doing it's, it's cool thank you Barbara I just want to ask a uh, picking on the square update again. <laughs> well, I get confused where they fall in on this, the phase, and I know we had talked, and now, so where are we at? <laughs> good, good question. So, uh, Mr. Clay and I stay in contact weekly. Um, when we spoke last week, picking on the square will probably not be starting until after July 1st and again that'll be dependent on it how far we are into phase two but one thing to note we do have the schedule posted on our website and for instance if there was a band going to play July the 15th whatever July 15th was whenever we get to have the next pick in is whatever band's going to play we're not going to go backwards um, but right now given the uptick of cases probably at least after July 1st um, the U.S. Forest Service is still soliciting input on the use of the Forest Service in Macon County. Um, I would still like to see this board at least pass a resolution promoting outdoor recreation, um, i.e. mountain biking on some designated section of Forest Service land near our town borders. Good. Mr. Fallon? Pass. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, town hall offices will be closed Friday, July the 3rd in observance of July the 4th. And the Franklin Fire Department will perform a live burn on a brush pile at the Wickmire property this month under the auspices of an old friend called the Torch. <laughs> so with that being said, if there's no further business, I'll entertain the motion to adjourn. So moved. Now, what are you looking so confused about? You remember the torch? <laughs> I can't get over how quickly our meetings go. <laughs> well, I can change that, sir. No, that's fine. You're doing a good job, Mayor. <laughs> We're setting the jerk. <laughs> oh. you're used to that county stuff. <laughs> Okay, thank you all for watching. I'm going to shut down the live stream. And I'll try to have a recorded version up within a week or so. Everybody else left. Yeah, I forgot to the top. Oh, I figured, I wondered why you didn't get to it during the meeting. Or is that just Bob? Let me shut this down. Oh my gosh, we were Good job. Huh? Oh my gosh, we were the last one out. Okay. I'll post the plan. And I'm, if you want me to, I can just email it to you tomorrow if you'd rather make it. Yeah, I'd prefer to do that. That would probably be easier. But